Back on August 21, 1911 in Paris, things were busy on a Monday morning. People were heading to work when three daring dudes sneak out of the Louvre Museum. They actually spent the whole night in the museum and now, guess what? They snatched something seriously important from the Louvre Museum, cleverly hiding it under a blanket while they tried to escape. They rushed to a nearby train station, caught the train at 8.45 a.m., and disappeared. But wait, it's not just any something, it's the Mona Lisa, the world's most famous painting. Today, this stolen masterpiece is worth nearly $1 billion. Crazy, right? But why they stolen the Mona Lisa? Why is this the world's most famous painting? What makes the Mona Lisa so special? What are the secrets hidden in the Mona Lisa painting? Hold on to your seats because in this video, we are going to unveil the mystery behind the Mona Lisa. The Mona Lisa, painted in 1503 by the incredible Italian artist Leonardo da Vinci, is a masterpiece that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to da Vinci's talents. Brace yourself because this guy was not only a phenomenal painter, but also an engineer, scientist, sculptor, architect, and theorist. He basically knew everything, from painting and cartography to astronomy, anatomy, botany, hydrology, geology, optics, and even paleontology. Seriously, we can make a whole video about his life. But let's not dive too deep into da Vinci's awesomeness for now and focus on the Mona Lisa, his most famous painting. Now, who's that mysterious lady in the portrait? According to Giorgio Vasari, an Italian artist, she is Lisa Gherardini, married to a guy named Francesco Giocondo. He asked Leonardo da Vinci to paint his wife, and that's how the painting got its start. The painting's name Mona Lisa stems from Madonna Lisa, later shortened to Mana, and eventually Mona. And there's another name, La Gioconda, which means the joyful one in Italian. After getting married, Lisa became Lisa Giocondo, and her name reflects her cheerful nature. In French, at the Louvre Museum in Paris, they call her La Gioconde. So whether you say Mona Lisa, La Gioconda, or La Gioconde, it's all about this famous and smiling lady. Back in 1550, people didn't fully believe Mona Lisa was Lisa Gherardini. Some thought she was da Vinci's mom or an Italian queen. There was even a wild idea that Mona Lisa was da Vinci himself, but nowadays, we're pretty sure she's Lisa Giocondo. When Mona Lisa was painted, Lisa was 24 years old, and that there might have been two reasons for painting this. Maybe when Lisa and her husband got their home in 1503, or when their second son was born in 1502. The second reason seems more likely, because three years before this, in 1499, Lisa lost her daughter. Take a look, and you'll see a veil over Lisa's hair. Some say it's a mourning veil, worn when someone in the family has passed away. Quite a puzzle, right? Now, one question arises here if Da Vinci was Italian, Mona Lisa was Italian. So why is the Mona Lisa in France and not Italy? Well, in 1516, the King of France, Francis I, invited Leonardo da Vinci to live there. Da Vinci packed his bags, Mona Lisa included, and moved from Italy to France. The historical details are a bit fuzzy, but it's believed that da Vinci hadn't finished the painting when he moved. Even after 15 years of work, he was still working on this painting. Fast forward to 1519, and da Vinci passed away while in France. The king, Francis I, kept the Mona Lisa as part of his royal collection. Jump ahead about 150 years to 1797, during the French Revolution. The painting was taken from the palace and handed over to the Louvre Museum. The interesting thing is that this is the reason why the Mona Lisa was stolen in 1911. The mastermind of this theft was Vincenzo Perugia and his two buddies. He was an Italian nationalist, believed that the painting rightfully belonged to Italy, not France. So after the theft, they took it to Italy. Let's explore what makes the Mona Lisa so special. Firstly, it wasn't painted on paper, canvas, or cloth. It's actually painted on poplar wood. During that period, this wood was the top choice among Italian painters, adding a unique touch to the masterpiece. Secondly, it's not huge. Check out the photos. See how it fits in the museum compared to people. It's just 77 centimeters by 53 centimeters, but its small size doesn't take away from its charm. In its time in Italy, 
it was the first painting that really focused so closely on the person. This was a half-length portrait, something we see a lot in photos today. But no one really made such paintings in those days. It was a groundbreaking move. Let's talk about the colors in the painting. You'll notice lots of brown and yellow shades, making it look kind of dull. In fact, it's so yellowish that a professor once thought Mona Lisa might have high cholesterol. But there are two reasons behind this. Firstly, there is a protective layer of varnish applied to this painting to guard against the potential harm of moisture, especially crucial because it was painted on wood. This precaution is necessary to shield it from humidity and moisture. This varnish may give it a dull look. Secondly, over time, there has been a natural bleaching effect. Originally, it was more vibrant and colorful when it was first painted. The natural aging process has given it the distinctive look we see today. People have tried to recreate the Mona Lisa to see how it originally looked. Leonardo da Vinci used a unique painting style called sfumato, which means smoky or blurred. In this technique, there are no clear outlines or boundaries between the background and the Mona Lisa. Da Vinci blended the colors seamlessly, even blending Mona Lisa's hair with the landscape. This blurring and blending technique, known as sfumato, gives the painting its distinctive, soft appearance. The mystery behind Mona Lisa's smile is a real head-scratcher. Take a close look. The more you focus on her smile, the more serious it seems. But now look into Mona Lisa's eyes. Suddenly, she starts smiling more. It works anywhere on the painting, whether it's the background, her forehead, or those eyes. When you don't focus on the smile, Lisa's face seems to light up. To perfect this smile, Da Vinci worked really hard. He spent many nights in a Florence hospital, studying facial muscles by looking at dead bodies. In his book, he mentioned that the muscles which move the lips are more numerous in man than in any other animal. That's how he nailed that famous smile. Da Vinci faced a tough task dissecting tiny and numerous lip muscles. He even studied horses, comparing their expressions to humans. His obsession with Mona Lisa's smile didn't end here. After this, Da Vinci studied on optics as well. He made sure that even if you're not directly looking at Mona Lisa, her smile still has a magical effect when she's in your side vision. Returning to the Mona Lisa theft, it was discovered that the mastermind, Vincenzo Perugia, worked at the Louvre Museum. One night, he hid inside, spent the night, and casually walked out with the painting the next morning. Vincenzo believed that, as Leonardo da Vinci was Italian, this painting should be in an Italian museum. When news of the theft spread, Detectives worldwide tried to hunt down the thief, but Perugia remained elusive. For two years, he kept the stolen masterpiece hidden at his home, pondering what to do with it. Feeling the pressure, he decided to sell it. He attempted to sell it to an art dealer in Florence, Giovanni Paggi. Sensing something amiss, Giovanni noticed the stamp on the painting, confirming it as the stolen masterpiece. He realized he was being offered the most wanted item in the world. As a result, Vincenzo was caught and sentenced to six months in prison. The painting was returned to the Louvre Museum and rehung on January 4, 1914. Nowadays, it is showcased behind bulletproof glass in meticulously controlled conditions, with humidity maintained at 50% plus slash 10% and the temperature strictly held between 18 degrees Celsius to 21 degrees Celsius. Perhaps the most interesting twist in this story is that Mona Lisa's fame skyrocketed only after the theft, making it the world's most famous painting. Surprisingly, before the theft, Mona Lisa wasn't widely known among the general public. It was primarily recognized by art enthusiasts. So if you find a bustling crowd around the Mona Lisa at the Louvre Museum today, you can attribute this newfound popularity to Vincenzo and his audacious act. We hope you enjoyed the video. If so, then share your thoughts in the comments and also share this video with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you can never miss our video.